In your assignment for 1.3, you are asked to find key features of the functions provided. Recall the following vocabulary terms. A maximum is the highest point of the function. In this function, the highest point is 12 comma 9. A minimum is your lowest point. In this function, the minimum is 0, 0. An increasing interval is where the function is increasing. In this function, it is increasing in two places. So we will say that the interval that's increasing is from 0 to 6, 0 included, union, 8 to 12. Decreasing interval is where the function is decreasing. In this case, it is decreasing on the interval 12 to 14, 14 included. The domain of this function are all of the x values. In this case, our x values are 0 to 14. The range will be all of the y values. This function has a range of 0 to 9. The x-intercept is where the function is crossing the x-axis. In this case, the x-intercept is at the point 0, 0. And the y-intercept is where the function crosses the y-axis. In this case, it is the same as the x-intercept, or 0, 0. In the task you did today in class, Scott's Matcha March, you compared a function that described the number of push-ups per day with a function that described the total number of push-ups for the month. As you did that, you found there were two different types of functions, a linear function and a quadratic function. You found that a quadratic function has a linear rate of change, where a linear function has a constant rate of change. This knowledge will help you in this section of your assignment. As you examine each table, you will need to determine whether the pattern is linear, quadratic, or neither. Apply the understanding you gained today in class and compare the first and second differences of the functions. If the first difference is linear and the second difference is constant, you have a quadratic function. If the first difference is constant, then you have a linear function. If there is no pattern in the first difference, then you have neither a linear nor a quadratic function. Once you have determined the type of function, you will need to write a recursive equation. You may want to make a graph or visual representation to help you determine the equation. Also remember, if you have a quadratic function, the recursive equation will have a linear function in it, since the recursive equation includes the rate of change of the function. Here are some examples. Let's look at the first difference for the following table. Notice that with each step, the y value is decreasing by 4. Therefore, the rate of change is negative 4. Since this is a constant rate of change, the function is linear. The recursive equation is created by subtracting 4 from the previous term. So the equation will be f of n equals f of n minus 1 minus 4. We also want to state that the beginning of the sequence is f of 0 equals 27. Here is another example. Let's look at the first difference. Notice that the first differences are not constant. However, by examining the second differences, we see that the first difference is linear and the second difference is constant. <clears throat> this function is quadratic. Now we need to write a recursive equation. Notice that the second difference is increasing by 1. So our slope of our linear rate of change is 1. Next, we can try adding linear functions to the previous terms that have a slope of 1. 
such as n, n plus 1, n plus 2. Let's start with f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus n. For f of negative 1, we have 7 minus 1, which equals 6. The function worked. As we try with other values for n, we see that this function matches the table. We also want to state that the beginning of the sequences is f of 0 equals 6. You studied recursive sequences for arithmetic and geometric sequences in Math 1, Module 1. In that module, you learned how to write and use recursive equations. Remember, a recursive equation describes how to find the next term in a sequence by using the previous term. A recursive equation will also tell you where the sequence begins. In this section of your assignment, you will use the starting point as the first term of your sequence, then use the recursive rule to get the next term from the previous term. If the sequence is arithmetic, you will add or subtract a constant amount, which we call the common difference, to the previous term to get the next term. If the sequence is geometric, you will need to multiply the previous term by a constant amount, which we call the common ratio, to get the next term. Here is an example. Write the first five terms of the sequence, f of 0 equals 40, f of n equals 1 half, times f of n minus 1. This is a geometric sequence, so we will need to multiply each term by 1 half to get the next term in the sequence. The first term in the sequence f of 0 is given to us. We know it's 40. To get the next term, we must multiply 40 by 1 half. <clears throat> this means the second term in the sequence is 20. To get the third term, we multiply 20 by a half, which gives us 10. This process continues until we have the first five terms. Finally, we know that the first five terms are 40, 20, 10, 5, and 2.5.